given what Russ just said and what we know about the team, that every game is a championship opportunity, how would you know it's a playoff week for them? How would you know it's a playoff Well, I mean, you know it's a playoff week, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's hard to get away from. There's more of you guys here, for one. Um, and then obviously, you know, we know that it's past week 17. So, um, but in terms of the atmosphere in the locker room, I think all of us are, you know, we're locked in, we're focused, we understand the, the environment we're in, the situation we're in. Um, and we've been prepping for this all year. Like, you know, Russ just said it, we, we prepare for every game like it's a championship opportunity and this is no different. So uh, we're going to prepare the same way we've been preparing. For you personally, what distinguishes Russ? from other quarterbacks in the NFL? Um, what distinguished? Well, I mean, I haven't been around a lot of other quarterbacks, um, so I can't and I won't speak to the differences of those quarterbacks because I don't know those quarterbacks. But for Russ in general, um, you know, one of the things that is, is admirable about him is that he's always positive. He's al he always has a positive mindset. doesn't matter what situation we're in, he's always, um, he's always talking about belief and thinking that, you know, no matter how negative the situation may appear, uh, we have an opportunity to, to come out of it unscathed. And, um, you know, it's infectious for our team. And I think it's as as the face of this franchise and the leader of our team, I think that's you got to have that in order to be successful, um, you know, in any situation, any given situation. So that's that's to me is probably the, the greatest thing that stands out to me about about Russ. When you're in a huddle in a situation, tie game or down seven, because you have done it with him so many times, tangibly, what effect does that have on a on a drive like that? Um, it's it's a calming thing for one. Um, you know, I think a lot of guys, especially young guys in this league, they can get uh, overwhelmed by the by the moment. Um, and Russ comes in, and he's no different in the first play. Um, to the fourth and goal play that we have to get it done. You know, he's no different. Um, and I think that's a, a, a pillar for guys to look to uh, in those moments, in those crucial moments, a, a stabilizing, calming um, presence. Uh, I think that's probably the, yeah, that, that's the greatest attribute um, in, the, in the huddle when we're in those moments. You've said a few times this has been a tough year and you're just battling through a lot. And KJ Wright talked about this yesterday. He was saying, you know, just get me to the playoffs and he's feeling good. Now, is there a sense of kind of just it starts over here? And you yeah, know, absolutely. Kind of yeah, I think that the biggest thing is the emotional part of it. Um, you feel like, uh, you know, you're in the playoffs, so it doesn't matter what's thrown at you. You can, you're going to handle it, you know. And there's a, a there's a, a newness or a, a refreshing feeling to it because, you know, you feel like, it's just you're going into a tournament where anything can happen. Um, and the only thing that really matters is winning. And so you put aside everything that you've been dealing with in the past um, subconsciously, and you can go for it. I mean, I, I was talking to our equipment staff uh, yesterday about this. I just feel so much more vibrant, so much the energy is there um, because I know it's playoff time. Uh, we look forward to these moments. And I'm not saying we don't we, – I'm, I'm not saying that we treat them differently. I'm just saying that there's – um, there's a certain energy when you get into the tournament. It's, uh, it's, in, it's undeniable. You get a sense that the crowds are louder, more intense. Does that feel different when you're in these uh, actual arenas? Um, you know, I don't know. Um, and this may be cliche to say, but because we play at CenturyLink Stadium and it's the loudest, one of the loudest stadiums in the NFL, when you get to playoff games, it, you know, sometimes it's not even as loud as what we experience in home games during the season. So um, I wouldn't say that's a factor. You've been praising Tyler Lockett all year. Did you see the stat, the perfect passer rating when targeted this year? I did. I did. Um, again, I couldn't be, I couldn't be more proud of him. You know, it, 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 uh, <laughs> it, it makes me emotional sometimes just because I've, I was there with him when he was going through you know, his injury and you know, went to the hospital with him and sat there with him and just talked to him and, you know, heard everything, how he was feeling in that moment, you know, and for him to be able to come from that moment, which was very dark place to where he is now and the success that he's had, um, it's miraculous, you know, I wouldn't, I, I can't even say it's miraculous. It's, it's just Tyler. And, and I, you know, we should have known that back then that he was going to become uh, the receiver that he is today, not only physically and gifted as he is on the football field, but mentally um, 
how strong he is and how resilient he is. Yeah, it's no surprise. Um, and yeah, obviously the stats back that up as well. Those moments for Tyler when you were with him in the hospital, what do you remember about his mindset in those moments? Um, you could tell he was just, he was trying to distract himself, you know, and um, we didn't really let him distract himself. We, you know, we, we were enjoying the moment with him in terms of, you know, letting him know it was going to be okay. You know, um, I think that was probably the most telling is, you know, a lot of guys, they don't demonstrate their emotions in, in those moments. Um, and Tyler wasn't any different you know, he wasn't trying to, but, you know, you could tell that it was bothering him. And um, I know that it meant a lot for the guys that did show up, myself, Paul Richardson, Jermaine Curse, when we were there. I know how much that meant to him. Um, and he's, he stated that several times. And uh, it was just a testament to his willingness to be somewhat vulnerable in that moment, um, you know, despite how devastating that moment was for him. Doug, we've talked before that, you know, statistically, you know, you guys aren't necessarily going to be in the, in the history books and stuff like that. But in terms of a legacy, the playoff games and making your mark there to ultimately leave, you know, something for the history books, does that kind of catch your attention at all? As a team? Individually, as the receivers and, and kind of, you know, playing for this team, this style? Um, you know, to be completely honest with you, I don't think about that. Um, Derek Jeter had one of a quote that stood out to me when he was talking about his retirement. He said that, you know, he wished he could go back and enjoy the moments. But the truth of the matter is, and he further explained this, was that you can't enjoy those moments. You can't think about, you know, the legacy while you're in it. You have to focus on the task at hand, um, and that's what we're going to do. And, you know, when, when it's all said and done, then, yeah, I think that all of us will come back and look at all the significant um, – accomplishments that we've made as, a, as an organization and as a unit as receivers. But right now, we're focused on Dallas. You said after the Kansas City game that you have gone through hell this season. You've been through a lot of injuries. How gratifying is it to know that you came through the hell, so to speak, to come out the other side in the playoffs? And now I assume you're feeling better physically than you have all season. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it is a, um, a refreshing feeling in some ways. Uh, Again, you know, the playoffs, it's, it, to me, it just starts everything over again. Your mindset starts over again. So, um, you know, everything that's happened in the past, we put that behind us, and we focus on what we can control. And, um, you know, it is what it is in, in terms of injuries, uh, but it doesn't matter now. You know, there's no more excuses. There's, you, you, you got to do what we got to do. We got four more games. You hear the word resilience a lot around here, and there's been a few different years with slow starts or whatever else and come back strong. How much of that is taught, or how much of it is just the style of players they bring in here? Uh, it's a combination of a lot of things. I, I can't pinpoint one thing. I would say that uh, um, the mindset that Pete Carroll instills in us from day one, that you know every game is a championship opportunity, that you're going to prepare the same way every day. Competition is everything. I think that's part of it. I think that um, they did get lucky <laughs> a, a long time ago with a whole bunch of just alpha competitors who, you know, when they practiced, they practiced like it was game day, and everybody had to follow suit. Um, that's hard to replicate if you don't have the players who are willing to buy into that. And, um, you know, they... Uh, they found a lot of guys who were willing to do that at the very beginning. And that mentality um, and that philosophy has been instilled in the younger guys as they come through the ranks because you have the proper leadership to do that. You know, And, and you can point to, to Bobby Wagner, to uh, Russell Wilson, and you know these guys have always demonstrated that on a consistent basis. Um, and so I think that's just part of the mentality that when you're here, you just absorb it and you become part of it. Some guys you might have known what you're going to get out of them coming into the season. Who are a few that most stick out to you in terms of stepping into bigger roles and helping this team get to where it is now? Yeah, I, I would say Trey Flowers, for one. Um, I love the progression that Trey Flowers has gone through the, the course of the season. Just, um, you know, he's, he's always had the physical tools. I think it was just a mental part of him gaining the confidence necessary for him to be out on an island sometimes and uh, be successful and hold his own. And he has done a, uh, a fabulous job of that. I will say I do miss Will Disley. I think Will Disley is going to be a uh, phenomenal player in this league for a very long time once he recovers from his injury. Um, 
you know, there's some question marks there. Obviously, at tight end, what we were going to do, and, and Will um, answered the question. Obviously, Ed Dixon um, and Nick Vanette have, have done a fantastic job as well. Uh, but I'm really excited to get Will Disley back um, in the future. Doug, when you absorb a you know a cheap shot or an illegal hit, how have you learned how to address that with with guys on the other side, knowing that you might see that, you know, knowing that you're going to see them maybe a few plays in in that game or maybe a game down down the line in the season. It, it, honestly, it really hasn't happened that often. Um, there's one particular play that I can remember uh, where I let the guy know that if he did that again, we'd have some problems. Um, you know, it's just it's part of the, it's part of the competition. Uh, eventually, he got to the point where he apologized. I apologized for what I said. <laughs> Um, and then we were cool. You know, I think there's a, there is there is respect on the football field, and, and most times guys are not trying to to throw cheap shots um, or to be be disrespectful in that way physically. But uh, sometimes it happens. You address it. You try to address it in a, a mature adult manner, um, and you see what happens. Doug, uh, looking at the Cowboys secondary, you see any kind of imprints from Chris Richard there? Things that you absolutely, right? absolutely. It's very similar to the defense that I've faced the past eight years. Um, you know, they have very similar technique, uh, very similar uh, coverage schemes. Um, you know, I, I think just looking at the tape, you, you understand exactly what they're trying to accomplish, and a lot of that obviously is Chris Richard and bringing that what the philosophy from here over to Dallas. Um, and so it's, it's going to present a great challenge to us because we know how difficult that defense is to, uh, to get behind and to, to make plays on. So it, pre it presents a unique opportunity for us to demonstrate how good we are uh, as an offense. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Thanks, Doug.